Hello and welcome to Dongle Life. My name is Alex and this is TechFlow. A couple of weeks back on TechFlow, we did a video where I showed you my top five Mac hacks. But I'm changing up a little bit this time. You guys really enjoyed that video. This one is going to be my top five most used Mac apps. Sponsored kindly by LastPass. Funnily enough, I've been a paid user before they even reached out to us. Let's get into this. So guys, coming in at number five, I'm gonna treat you, I'm gonna treat all of you. There's actually gonna be two programs coming in at the number five spot, and please bear in mind, this list is in no particular order. And again, I wanna preface, if I was actually going to show you my top five most used Mac apps, I'd be showing you things like Google Chrome, but what would be the point in, in that? As I say guys, two for one coming in at the number five spot. I'm gonna go into my networking folder here. This is an app called Wi-Fi Explorer. Now before I open it, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is scan for Wi-Fi on the actual Mac. And as you can see, it just says everything is full signal. It doesn't really give you a, a uh, an actual indication as to the actual signal strength. I mean, some of these access points, which I know are in literally buildings over the road. And then I've got my PlayStation 4, which is right behind me. The actual Mac Wi-Fi analyzing tool is absolute rubbish. So I like to use this. It's called Wi-Fi Explorer. It's a free tool. As again, guys, I'll put all these links in the description. As soon as you open it, guys, all it's gonna do is scan for the networks. But it gives you a load more information than, well, what the normal Mac would give you. So I'm just gonna turn off this update here because I don't think we need it. So as you can see here, it gives you the BSSID, which isn't really very useful for me. What I like to do is see the actual vendor of what's around here. So if you actually click on that, we're gonna sort this out by, by vendor right here. So as you can see, our office actually used Sophos access points, and then all of these access points, which are ubiquity networks, are the gear that we use in our actual office. So you can see that as well as all the signal strengths, so you can actually sort it by signal strength, so what's got the weakest, what's got the strongest. But then this is where I really, really, really use this tool. It actually shows you the channel of the Wi-Fi. So you can go ahead and make sure you are putting your channel or your Wi-Fi on its own separate channel so you're not overlapping with anybody else. And it also shows you the bands and the width that they are using and the total theoretical throughput, which is awesome. And also, I told you guys, number five, the number five spot was a two-in-one. We're gonna show you a separate app. So if you actually want to then go ahead and log onto your router or router to change your channel after you've done a little bit of Wi-Fi exploring, this is a free app called LandScan. You open this, you click the play button, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna scan for all the devices on your network, and your router will be one of these. Obviously, there's a lot of devices on our network here, but you can sort them by IP address or host name. So in the number four spot, we're actually taking a little bit of inspiration from the number five spot. You probably noticed me double click the top of one of the applications that I showed you in the number five spot and it maximized it. So here is HyperDoc. As soon as you've really opened it and configured it, then you just leave it and tell it to open on startup and it'll open up in the background and I'm just used to having this now. It's really, really cool. So essentially what you do is, uh, well, you want to keep HyperDoc running in the background so here's what it's gonna do. I've got this Photoshop window right here and um, it just lets you snap like Windows. So I take this window here and I drag and let go. And there you go, it's full screen just like that. Really simple and I now use this all the time. Speaking of things I use a lot, LastPass. So essentially, I use this old password manager system. Whenever I was logging in, it was good because it would store all of my passwords, but whenever I wanted to go and get one of my passwords, I would have to open up the, the app and log into the app and then find the website that I wanted, let's say Amazon, for example. Then I'd have to go ahead and manually control C or command C the password and command V the password into Amazon or wherever I'm trying to log into. Really, really annoying. But with LastPass, it's really quite simple. So all you do is you go to the Chrome Web Store and you install the LastPass extension. And then essentially, as you can see, I've, I've already got it installed here. And look at, look at those reviews. This is serious gear. As soon as you go to Amazon here and attempt to sign in, I'll just put my email address in there, which Jed will blur out. And there you go. You can see this little thing right here. If I click that, all it's going to go ahead and do is stick my password straight in there. Bish, bash, bosh. 
I'm in. So as you guys can see here, as well as installing the actual LastPass manager, it also installs this little box up here. So if you click on that, it'll take you straight to your vault. And then what I've gone ahead and done here, guys, is created a brand new account so you guys can't see all of my other passwords that I've got in my actual LastPass account. I'm going to go ahead and add a site to show you guys how easy it is here. So I'm just going to add things here. So you just go down here and you click on Add Site. And then the URL of the website that I'm going to add again. And I'm going to use Amazon as a test, so I'm going to put Amazon co.uk in here and then I'm gonna add my username which is now blurred out and then also add my password and then click save and as you guys can see I've got my Amazon account right there I can go ahead and launch Amazon right from the last pass window and one really cool thing is if you click on this little spanner right here you can auto change the password so if you're thinking your passwords are a little bit weak you can go ahead and use last passes one click password changer and it go ahead and change your password for you like that. And just like how LastPass filled in my password when I showed you guys on Amazon, you can also do the form fills, which is essentially you can add actual full-on forms, like things like debit cards and credit cards and payment addresses and, addre and then just your actual house address. So if you're at checkout for something, you can actually check out in a matter of clicks. Payment information, LastPass. Address, LastPass. Checkout complete. And that, you see, was the main reason I moved to LastPass from my other password managers. Just because they autofill so easily, and on top of that, they also have a really cool mobile app which works really, really well, and even autofills on Android and, and yes, iOS. It autofills on iOS. Shocker. So with all of those features, guys, and the fact that it's as tight as a bank on security, that is why I want to recommend it to you guys. We'll put a down a link in the description. We really hope you go and check out LastPass. And thanks, guys, for sponsoring this video. I mean, I've used LastPass myself for years now, but thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, so moving on from LastPass down to number two right here, it's going to be Final Cut Pro. Now, while this is opening, I'm going to tell you guys that I am primarily a Premiere Pro user, right? And there's this big debate between Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, and I'm 100% on Team Premiere Pro. I, I am, I am, I am. But on a Mac, if you have a Mac, I mean, why are you watching this video if you don't have a Mac? Because it's my top five favorite Mac apps. Anyway, Final Cut Pro on a Mac is absolutely incredible because the software is made by Apple and optimized for Apple Mac. Books, and that means it works really, 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 really well. So it means if you have, let's say, an older Mac, but have Final Cut Pro on it, you will still be able to edit native 4K content on that machine than an equivalent Windows computer running Premiere Pro. And that is just straight facts. And as you can see, clicking the spacebar right here to open up the preview, it just doesn't lag, it doesn't stutter, I can scrub through the timeline, and everything just works, it's amazing. As you can see, I've even got some effects on here right now, and it's just playing absolutely fine. And even Jed, our editor and filmer here at TechFlow, has a 2013 MacBook Pro, and uh, he can edit 4K content on his fine using Final Cut. I also love the magnetic timeline. It makes things super, super, super easy. And also rendering things out and exporting your project because the program Final Cut is optimized for MacBooks. It renders out a 10 minute 4K video in about half the time, about five minutes. And for this last one, guys, just to show you that our videos aren't scripted, I wanted to, uh, well, I wanted to leave this spot open and just look through my laptop and see if I could see anything else to recommend. Um, what's going on on this? On this, I've got some Mac add-ons here. What's going on here? What's cool? What have I got that I can show you guys here? Oh, okay. This is something I got really, really recently, and I actually have been using it quite a lot. And I can recommend this to you guys. This is Doctor Cleaner Pro. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna demonstrate this to you guys because it's super, super cool. So I open this probably only about once a month, but I need to do this without fail because it keeps my Mac up to date and all running smoothly. So as you can see, as soon as you open Dr. Cleaner, it opens up here and tells you how much memory you've got left, to which I have 54%. It's a slight little bit like C Cleaner for Windows, but the Mac version, if that makes sense. Well, as you guys can see here, it's telling me that it's found a couple of junk files. It's found some big files that it will then show me if I want to remove them. So if you click that, it's going to probably give me a load of films that I've got on here. Yeah, I've got Wreck-It Ralph there and a load of other big films. And it's simply just helping you 
clean up storage. If we go back to the smart scan screen, it's saying applications that you haven't used for some time and it maybe say why don't you remove them and clean them off your computer. Or you could even view all of the junk files as to which there's for Whoa. So as you can see here, Google has a junk file folder, 471 meg full of junk. Apple has a few, Adobe has a few here. So I don't really need any of this junk on my computer. So I can just go ahead and remove, well, almost a gig's worth of junk off my computer. And as you can see now, it's cleaning that. And there we go, complete. I freed up almost, well, literally just under, three meg under a gig of space. And sometimes removing apps from a MacBook can be a little bit tricky and it always leaves behind some of the config files. It has an app manager as to which it will help you remove applications. So if I didn't want something on here, like for example, Bandwidth Plus or Amphetamine, I could click those two and then just click remove and the software will do it all for me. So there you go guys, that is my top five most used Mac apps. Again, in no particular order guys. I do hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have any questions about any of the apps I've used, feel free to hit us up on Twitter at TechFlowTweets or on Instagram at TechFlowPics or in the comment section down below guys. You can find LastPass down there in the description too. Thank you guys for sponsoring today's video and making TechFlow possible. And all of you guys watching at home, we'll see you in the next one. Adios. Plus, 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 plus,